In lecture 26, we're going to finish off talking about triangles by talking about how we can find the area of a given triangle. We're going to use a couple of different formulas. We're going to first of all go back to what is probably one of the most well-known area formulas and uh, use it to be able to find the area of a triangle in the cases that we know a side, an angle, and a side. A side angle, side triangle. If we don't know a side angle, side, then we can use the techniques from previous lectures to actually find or solve the triangle. There is one exception where we have a shortcut is if we know the three sides of the triangle, we have what's called Heron's formula or the um, area formula based on the semi-perimeter. And we will look at that as an example near the end of this lecture. So first of all, let's recall from our earlier mathematics courses and our earlier mathematics knowledge that the area of a right triangle can easily be calculated using the base and the height of the triangle. So the area of a right triangle is based on these two values. And the area is equal to, we'll use k, as it, which is the conventional variable, to represent the area of a triangle. So this k means area, one-half base times height. It's fairly easy to see where the formula comes from. If I were to draw a line straight across parallel to side b and one straight down parallel to side h, you see that creates a rectangle. The area of a rectangle is base times height, and since the triangle is one half of that entire rectangle, that's where we get that the area of the triangle is one half the base times height. Now what does that do if we don't have a right triangle, that is, oblique triangle? turns out that that same formula can be used, except that h is no longer the length of one of the sides. It's the distance we get by going from the highest point, if we put the side b parallel to the x-axis, and drop a line straight down vertically and create a right triangle. If we call that h for the height of the triangle, then this is still going to be one-half base times height. All right, with that now being said... Um, what we will do to figure out the area of a triangle whenever we don't have the height but we have lengths of angles, we simply have to use our knowledge of trigonometric functions to find that h. So what if all we know are two sides and the angle between them? So we consider that if I were to drop this side right here straight down and call it h, we know that sine of the angle c here is equal to h over a. So a, sorry, h would be a sine of capital C, which then means that the area k is actually equal to one half times a times B times the sine of the angle between them. Uh, just to see where I got that, let me let me erase this real quick and rewrite it based on what you see right here. If I put a B here times the H that I just derived here, I get A sine of capital C. And just to write A and B in alphabetical order, I would say K is equal to one half A B sine of the angle between them, which is angle C. And that, again, would work for any particular angle. It would have to be the one-half times the two sides times the sine of the angle between them. If I had the triangle where I knew this side over here happened to be capital A, which makes this side B and this side little c, then that would give us this formula down here that the area is one half b times c times sine of the angle between it. If I knew the angle up top, which is capital B, and the two sides between it, or on each side of it, would be a and c, that would give me one half ac sine of b. 
we have three different angle form sorry area formulas for a triangle based on the two sides we know and the angle in between them. Let's do some examples. To find the area of the triangle when we know a is 8, b is 6, and c is 60 is as simple as recognizing that c is the angle between sides a and b. So all I have to do is directly apply the formula 1 half AB sine of capital C, which is 1 half times 8 times 6 times the sine of angle 60. 1 half of 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. We know sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. So I can divide 2 into 24 and get 12. So 12 square roots of 3 is the area exactly, or if we approximate using a decimal number, plug that into my calculator, I'd get 20.8. When you know a side, an angle, and a side, it's always as easy as plugging into that formula. If you don't know a side, angle, side, say you knew a side, side, angle, or an angle, side, angle, triangle, you can do one of two things. One, you can apply that formula after you've solved the triangle using previous techniques, or if you have a special case, particularly the side, side, side triangle, where you know the three sides, there is an alternative formula, kind of a surprising formula that doesn't look like it comes from anything geometric about the triangle. It's just a surprising formula that will always give you the correct area. Here's what you got to do to apply this formula. If you know the three lengths of a triangle, and it doesn't matter if it's right, all you got to do is measure the distance between three points and label them as, of course, A, B, and C. The first thing you do is you calculate what's called the semi-perimeter. The semi-perimeter is this formula right here. And you'll recall from your, your days in geometry or in high school or maybe even basic math, the perimeter of a polygon is just adding up the lengths of the sides. So a perimeter of a triangle is just A plus B plus C. So the semi-perimeter would be half of that. Semi meaning half. If you take half of the perimeter and plug it into this formula right here, which I'll highlight in blue, this formula here is called Heron's formula. You take the square root of the semi-perimeter semi times the semi-perimeter minus A, semi-perimeter minus B, and semi-perimeter minus C. That will give you the area of the triangle. Now the answer to Y is something I can't leave unanswered, but I'm not going to put it into this lecture. The reason why, you can watch the video for proof of Heron's formula which is surprisingly not simple. Even though the formula is simple, it will take me about three pages to walk through why it is true. But I want you to see it, um, but it is an optional video for you to download and watch um, of how we can prove that the Heron's formula finds the area of a triangle. But for this particular class, for this particular lecture, and for any of the homework that's related to it, all you gotta do is be able to apply it. So let's apply Heron's formula. If I call 4 my A and 5 is B and 7 is C, then first let's find the semi-perimeter, which would be 1 half, 4 plus 5 plus 7. Okay, 1 half of 4 plus 5 plus 7, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 7 is 16, half of 16 is 8. So your semi-perimeter is going to be 8. All right, now, Having done that, we're going to take that the area is the square root of s times s minus a, s minus b, s minus c. So that's 8 times 8 minus 4, 8 minus 5, and 8 minus 7. That would be the square root of 8 times 4 times 3 times 1. So 8 times 4 is 32. 32 times 3 is 96. Is that right? Something seems off. Yep, that's correct. And so the square root of 96 can be simplified. 
we know that uh, let's see what 16 goes in there so it's 16 times 6 so you could do 4 square roots of 6 or if you plug into your calculator you can approximate that and to the nearest tenths place I get that that is 9.8 so either of these answers would be acceptable depending on how the question is asked if I ask for a decimal approximation to the tenths decimal place, 9.8. If you want an exact answer, four square roots of six. But that's the area of the triangle using Heron's formula. The last uh, example here asks us to find the area of, a, uh, of an irregular shape, which happens to be the shape of the home plate at any major league baseball stadium. You have this... Uh, shape that is a pentagon. It has five sides to it. Now, none of the area formulas we had in this uh, chapter give us any details about uh, pentagons. So how are we going to find the area of this shape? The answer is, the easiest way is to break it down into triangles uh, or triangles and rectangles, um, basic shapes that we know formulas for. Knowing that this side here is a right angle, as is this side, uh, or this angle, I should say. If we were to cut straight across the top, we form a triangle, T, and a rectangle, R, and we can find the areas of those separately. So, for example, the area of R would be 17 times 8.5. And if I just plug 17 times 8.5 into my calculator, 17 times 8.5 gives me 144.5 square inches because the units were in inches. What about the angle T? Or sorry, the triangle T? Well, um, I have two choices. One, I can do it using the um, side angle side version of the area formula. But in this case, I actually happen to know all three sides. I know the side up here is 12, the side down here is 12, but the across the top, since that's going to match the length of the base of my home plate, that's also going to be 17 inches. So I can use Heron's semi-perimeter formula. So to do that, let's start by finding the semi-perimeter, which one half times the semi-perimeter, which would be 12 plus 12 plus 17. So one half of 24 plus 17 is uh, 41. So that gives me a 20.5. So now I'm going to take T as the square root of, that is the area of this triangle, will be 20.5 times 20.5 minus 12, times 20.5 minus 12, times 20.5 minus 17. It's a semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus each, each side length. If I plug that all into my calculator, I get the square root of roughly 5,183.9375 or approximately 72.0 square inches. <coughs> Pardon me. So then the total area would be R plus T, which is 144.5 plus 72.0, which gives me uh, 216.5 square inches. And uh, that completes this lecture on the area of a triangle.